the relationship between Manasseh and um, non-Jewish scholars. Um, you write extensively about that. Are we talking about interfaith dialogue? Uh, is it more uh, an intellectual endeavor or did he see this as his mission to bring you know, the ethos of, of Judaism to the world? I think it's a bit of all of those things. Um, he had many Gentile friends and I would say that he enjoyed greater respect among Gentiles than he did among Jews in this period. Um, and many of his writings, which he wrote and published in Spanish and typically also in Latin translations, were written for a Gentile audience. Uh, and as you say, it's on the one hand, it was often just an intellectual engagement. Um, Manasseh, I thought, I think had a, a wide variety of philosophical and theological interests in such topics as the immortality of the soul, uh, resurrection, um, divine punishment, divine providence. But he was also a writer for, for Jews. He wrote uh, a guide to the Jewish home, to, to use a more modern um, title. Uh, for in, that was really his only publication in Portuguese was this guide to the Jewish home for his own community and for other Sephardic communities, especially those that are welcoming uh, Jews returning to the fold. Um, but his biggest audience uh, was without question the Gentile one. And Manasseh saw himself as a, a, not really the spokesman, but as a kind of mediator between the Jewish and the Gentile world. And he was regarded in that way by his Gentile correspondents. Um, very often when they had questions about the Jewish view on this or that question, they would write to Manasseh. Um, and for example, um, some of his books were responses to such questions as what is the Jewish view on free will? Um, how do Jews understand the end of time? What is the Jewish view on the Messiah? And he received queries from friends in England and Germany uh, and also Dutch friends uh, to explain, uh, for example, the finer points of Jewish law. So in that sense, he was um, a kind of, he was perceived as a representative of Jewish intellectual and religious traditions to the Gentile world. Um, on the other hand, uh, he was also a kind of Jewish apologist. He was, he was defending these Jewish views, not just explaining them, but trying to make them seem more rational in the eyes of people who might not be so well inclined to Jews. He had to walk a very careful line here though, because he also, took an ecumenical approach. He tried to show in some of his writings that there is a common religious core to Judaism and Christianity. Uh, but he, he, you have to do that, especially in the 17th century, without trying to um, eliminate Jewish distinction. Uh, so on the one hand, he's writing for this Gentile audience, defending Judaism, clarifying it for them and showing that, in fact, Jews are not that different from you. At the same time, over his other shoulder, he had to keep an eye on uh, his Jewish critics and especially the community in Amsterdam, which sometimes felt he went a little bit too far in accommodating uh, Judaism to Christianity.